Mud Series 2, aka Urban Fantasy's cool best friend, continues with episode 6. What I love about the intro this time is that everyone looks like the audience reacting to the mad shit that happened last time. Except the dogs, they were clever and watched the show on YouTube before I could spoil that. <laughs> episode 6 opens with a, quite an interesting question. Why does Mrs. Dears want a day of destruction? No, it's how the fuck is Dalston still narrating the previously on sections? Here, I've just had an horrible thought. If the evil one destroys the world, we all get destroyed. You don't. You lived a nasty, British and short life a few hundred years ago. I really wish they'd have subbed in the old man, spending the whole time wailing about his guilt. All that suffering and misery, I caused all that pain and horror. All my fault. Anyway, the action continues with Bill waking up in the ambulance. The same when he died in, but not because this is a parallel universe, I think. You look like sick. Anyway, we only have 20 minutes of action this episode, and it's not like we're fast approaching anything important. We come from the Day of Destruction. The what? The Day of Destruction. Oh yeah, that. But we better stop the action so everyone can ogle a tall glass of wallpaper paste pretending to be a doctor. Can I help you, ladies? <laughs> can you follow me? Can you uh, bring the patient? Isn't that those guys' job? Anyway, the drama continues because all's not well with Bill. Bit of bad news, I'm afraid. How bad is bad? Well, uh, very, uh, very, 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 very bad. Yeah, I'm afraid he's played by Russell Tove. Not something much less serious. Just all their imminent deaths because the doctor is Miss Dears. Young William here only has a few moments to live. Dramatic chord. No. You know, I'm beginning to wonder if the destroy the world thing is just an elaborate plan to have sexual tension with all the main characters. You won't miss him. Because you'll be dead as well. And the world outside won't miss you because they'll all be dead. This is a pretty good speech, actually. For all the random, silly, pointless stuff that gets shoehorned in because it's a kid's show, the writing really shines when it gets a chance to. And the pets won't whine or pine for their masters. Because they'll all be dead. The sea won't move and the winds won't blow. Everything dies. I appreciate well-written children's television because of what it takes for the writer to pull it off. As a genre, it has very strict rules, and it's often made for the lowest common denominator. And is all too often made by people who don't care about what they're creating. So when a kid's show surpasses those handicaps and succeeds, I think it deserves special praise. When? When the last grain of sand falls through. Don't get me wrong, if this was a family show or an adult show with the same weirdly clever, twist-filled plot, I'd still love it but I don't think I'd be quite so impressed with that. Welcome to the day of destruction, Conigars. No, it is not polite to threaten people with a Randy Quaid film. Go back to telling them you're gonna murder them. Anyway, she escapes the timely intervention of some paparazzi who are inexplicably interested in Bill's injury. What did the doctor say, Bill? There is no time! We're just doing our job! Ow! 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 Now, I can think of a few reasons for this. One, this town has so little news that someone falling over near a bus is a big fucking deal and the timing is coincidence. Two, Miss Dears is controlling the paparazzi. Or three, the national media has finally caught up with the arch kidnapper Miss Dutteredge. I think it's probably one, I hope it's two, but I'll fucking piss myself laughing if it's three. And anyway, I, with an eye and earshot of the reporters and their cameras, they discuss their plans to use a sword to stop the evil one from destroying the world. The devastation will not stop till we can stop her. How do we do that? With the sword of Conagar. Leave us, look, leave us! There is a not tiny possibility that they're going to be watching the day of destruction from the inside of a padded cell. Whoa, where's the sword? I know where Mrs. Dears chucked it. Yeah, and so does Miss Dears. She chucked it and she wasn't distracted by a brief sojourn to the fucking past. If she's any sense, she's hidden it somewhere else. But as it turns out, it doesn't matter if she did because... Nature is on our side. The wind will take us. This is one of the most accidentally literal cases of writers pulling something out of their ass that I've ever seen. 
So yes, they're now traveling at the speed of plot. Coincidentally, that's almost the exact same speed that Quicksilver goes in the X-Men films. Hilariously, all my kidnapping comments seem to be catching up with my Dutter Edge. Because her bosses at the vaguely defined welfare organization that she works at have seen the news. Look. Get out! Dutter Edge. So, these two are going to insert themselves into what remains the plot. Meaning this now is more plot than the last few seasons of Game of Thrones. Good thing this is much more coherent. Anyway, how is the feared monster of our time, Miss Deers, preparing for the end of the world? Mainly by trying on hats. I was a bit of a girl in my day. Your century. Here we are. She has a globe and she's going to somehow use it to destroy the world. And there's a hilarious mistake because Australia's not on it. Nor is New Zealand. Now, either this is a modern one that's shoddily made, or it's a magic globe that dates back to her past. But if it is, there's another problem. Australia was discovered about 90 years after the witch trial that made her evil, but I somehow doubt that globes from the early 17th century were made of plastic. No rest for the wicked. Ah, well, a nice cup of tea. If you then watch as her nebulous handiwork, natural disasters and riots happening all over the world, you know, I've never seen actual rioting in a kid's show before. Nice one, Mud. It's like I'm watching Apocalypse all over again. Yeah. Mrs. Diaz, are you doing this? <laughs> Come the day of destruction, mayhem and madness will prevail. Uh, Mrs. Diaz? Yes, love? When you kill the world and everything dies and that, do we, uh, die? <laughs> oh, no, love, you're with me. You're the evil one's beasts. Oh. Just asking. Have a biscuit. She is such a nice genocidal maniac. Kind, courteous, polite, free with the biscuits. Easily four to five mass graves, filled with satisfied customers. Trouble? No, not trouble exactly, but you should maybe have a chainsaw and a boomstick handy? Conigars. I thought they would have given up. What do we do? We don't do anything. Well, then the next 12 minutes promises to be a tad dull. Ooh, now they're going at the speed of Google Street View. Now nah, the wind somehow carries them inside. I really don't understand why involving nature itself was necessary. Nature is on our side. The old man has powers that are just as vaguely defined as Miss Deer's. He could have just cast a spell or something. They searched the house for signs of her, but she's crafty. I think she laughed. Where is she? <laughs> you know, I don't think Bill interacted with the dogs before. The chances are Ruby told him that they speak English, but it's possible that he's just trying his luck. I mean, he was just dead and the wind blew him to magic sword. It's been a bit of a weird day. Anyway, I was wrong. Mrs. Deers has gone invisible. <laughs> which would make it a tad trickier to stab her, but not impossible, assuming she's magnetic. So it turns out that Miss Deers is a bit of an old school troll. Oh, hot ruby. Oh, boiling, boiling hot, scalding, scalding, boiling, burning hot. Oh, frozen cold, frozen cold with icicles. Look, play properly. All right, no more chicken. Well, who's hot then? It's a tough decision, but I'm going to say Trevor Peacock is playing the old man. You may well recognize him from the Vicar of Dibley. No, 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 no. No, it was quite well known. I think some of them will. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, if you don't shut up, I'm going to stop editing you into the review. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm going to do that in a way. Bill? Bill's hottest? Why are you trying to make my joke about you wanting to have sexual tension with all the leads come true? It's like The Graduate starring Mrs. Robin Grandson, times 40. Oh, hotting up? Oh, getting hotter, hotter. Oh, boiling, boiling hot, scalded, scalding, boiling, burning, sunburn hot. Sunburn, hotter than boiling? Well, now we know she's mad. Boo! <laughs> okay, how the fuck was she talking if the TV was off? I know she's magical, but that's just... Probably reasonable because magic was involved. Ooh, stuff's getting all tense. And when these two arrive, it'll get even more tense for Miss Dudridge. 
Karen brought her own manager. According to the file, Miss Studridge should have taken those children to Felfont Heights. I promise you, Karen, when we get to Dunster, that woman's in for a serious reprimand. The madness permeating the globe has even reached here. They're driving in England, in the rain, with the windows down. The final moment, the last full stop. The end of the world gets nearer and nearer, and the beauty of it is, if you can't catch me, you can't stop me. <laughs> oh no! The real magic on that sword is the insulation. You know, I was thinking about going into this whole thing explaining why she was completely right, they can't stop her if they can't find her, and that Bill's a dumbass. But then I decided it'd be much more fun to point out that for Bill's plan to even begin to make sense, he'd have to think that the people on TV are literally inside the box. And the Bill's an even bigger dumbass. Is that it? It can't be that easy! Maybe it is, maybe we've stopped the evil one! That guy has not been the same ever since he found out that he's tangentially and accidentally responsible for more suffering and death than the average world leader during the coronavirus. Anyway, they assume that A, she's dead, and B, that the world's not going to end. We saved the world. We saved the world! We saved the world! Now, B sounds like a fair assumption if you're stupid enough to believe A, but she's probably smart enough to have something set up in the event of her defeat. So far, she's been pretty genre savvy. We saved the world! We saved the world! You're gonna regret that when the world starts yelling at you to shut the fuck up. Have we? There's only one way to find out. Wait until tomorrow and see if the world's been exploded? Oh, of course not. Go outside and join in the celebration. Honestly, I think this might be an attempt to annoy her into breaking cover. We save the What's that? A much more obvious twist than most thus far. They follow her voice to the TV shop because naturally she'd want to be with her people. Did you really think it was going to be that easy? Well, yeah, for a minute there they kinda did. Anyway, now they have to destroy a couple of dozen TVs. Mwahaha! And then to mark them and their presumption, she gives them scenes of real life disaster, famine, pain, and they assume bone kickers. I want you to share in my glorious victory, my resounding triumph, the despair, the destruction, the horror, the annihilation. Have we lost? Of course you've lost. Ruby tries her secret weapon, weaponized empathy. You're gonna be ever such a lonely old lady. Oh, really? Don't you worry, pet. I'll have a bit of company. <laughs> Look at that grin. She's got plans for those dogs and an eternity of peanut butter. You get biscuits and hugs, that's what you get. <laughs> anyway, the old man hits on a plan. If she means to keep the dogs with her after the end, then they can fuck that up by getting the dogs first. If she's gonna take the dogs, she's gonna have to go and get the dogs. What was that? I'm not expecting anyone. No one knows I'm here. It's your house, your house where you face the heroes, the heroes who you told that you'd have the dogs after the end, your dogs who run into the heroes in your house. I'm taking back what I said about you being genre savvy. Anyway, she sends the dogs to face the heroes in the cheapest of all action scenes, an off-screen one. Let's even up the odds, shall we? Do them! Vic, we're back! <laughs> They wouldn't hurt the dogs, but they have no problem with maybe giving two idiots brain damage. I really like the little piece of realism sprinkled around like a garnish. <laughs> now for possibly the first time in history, the heroes of a kids show are about to shank a bitch. A sword! <laughs> 
when reality catches up with them at the worst possible time. Come away, children. Yes, but come no, on. but you're supposed to be a self on heist looking after these children. Anyway, Cliffhanger, the best of the show's cliffhangers, and one of the earlier ones made use of an actual cliff. Bye bye. It's a lightly surreal but lovely touch that the thing exploding was a TV set. Okay, this is basically all set up for the cliffhanger. One of the weaker episodes overall, but Wake Mud Series 2 is still better than a fuckload of shows. Only one episode left, so join me next time for what happens after the end. <laughs>